Bottoms. 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 What is up, Bottom Nation? Happy Monday. You are a good little bottom for turning this on. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, Patreon.com slash WHGS to donate to this podcast. One dollar right now gets you all the content benefits. That's four bonus episodes, the live streams. And uh, yeah, it's a gift from me to you for all the patrons who are being awesome. And if you want to just try being a patron for just one dollar, you can go and do that and get all the benefits. It's a great deal. AshleyGavin.com for my tour dates. I'm coming to L.A., San Francisco, Sacramento, San Diego, and then a bunch after that. This week on the podcast, one of my best friends in the world, Jamie Wolf. He's also one of my favorite comedians. He's so good. What the fuck are you talking for? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know what this is? <laughs> this is the audio note, you piece of shit. Oh, sorry. This is where I connect to the listener one on one without any encumbrance. You are an encumbrance. And I walked in. I love you too. <laughs> no, but I think this is even funnier for the people listening at home who've never heard anyone in the audio note before. I guess we all shouted bottoms together. So I guess. <laughs> Jamie Wolf is truly one of my favorite comedians in the entire world, and he gets into his two room. He's also, he's just a real, really good ally. And we get into his two roommates who were together having a secret relationship in while he was their roommate. And uh, really, really funny stuff. All right. I hope you have a great week. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listener, this episode is brought to you by Helix. I absolutely love my Helix mattress. I've been sleeping on it for a few years now. They were my first ever sponsor, and I absolutely am getting the best sleep of my life because it's personalized for me. I took a quiz, and it gave me the perfect mattress. I went on over to helixsleep.com. You put in your, a couple stats, and it spits out the perfect mattress for you. And right now, listeners of the show can get up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. For our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. I was extremely close to gay sex. When I was in college, I had two roommates who were best friends in high school. Did you sense anything between them on day one of school? I didn't put together what was going on until Thanksgiving break when I went home and told my family. <laughs> and they went, you know they're gay, right? <laughs> and I, I was like, no, they're not gay. And then I went back to school and they were sucking each other's penises. <laughs> so loud that it woke me up. <laughs> Extra. To read all about it. We're having gay sex today. Ashley Gavin having gay sex with her pussy with a woman. You, guys, you like that? <laughs> Why did you guys, you weren't there for me no, on the no. pod. I was, I was You waiting. guys acted like you didn't well, like I wasn't it before. Part of the original... You were like, wow, that was a lot. No, no, no. <laughs> it was not a lot. It was not. I was waiting for your 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 riff. You had the great riff. Oh, that I'm yeah, competing on the other, corner. the other corner. Dicks and pussies. Dicks and pussies. <laughs> and I'm trying to outsell you. <laughs> We've got assholes. Slam shut with cocks. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered. We can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty um, versatile machinery. <laughs> that is the one thing. Well, this is not really so much gay as much as it is like penis versus vagina. <laughs> Verse. 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 Yeah, penis versus vagina. You know, the ultimate roast battle. Um, penis versus it's vagina. It's like a WWE yeah, match. Yeah, exactly. In the right corner, we have penis. <laughs> Coming in. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Weighing a staggering four and a half inches. <laughs> it's a weight, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a, yeah. And on the left side, we have vagina. Coming Ooh. in at a void, <laughs> a giant void, a lack of anything, actually. <laughs> Coming um, in at a space. <laughs> <laughs>
That's what boys and girls are good at, counting and being empty, respectively. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, thanks for being here. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with Jamie Wolf, my friend. Incredible comedian. Yes. The funniest guy. Honestly. I'm pumped to be. The (laughs) funniest. The funniest. Like, I think... You you know how much people respect you, right? I fangirled over you when we first met. I was like, oh, yeah. I've been following you on TikTok and like, yeah, you're that so was funny. so sweet. Um, I don't, but I know I know you <laughs> I know you respect me. I respect and you I know deeply. you respect me, I and that's what I care about because I respect both of you guys. Thanks. I'm not sure Y'all, why. Y'all. Oh no. Oh, you're <laughs> oh, done. No. You're fucking done. Extra, extra. <laughs> read all about it. Gay sex man falls from grace. No more gay sex. Cisgender freak misgenders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm really glad that you're here because I was like, ah, oh, episodes with friends. Yeah, it's a fun Just one. Just to like sit with friends and you're, you've you always been the great. You know what I love about you? And one of the things that you do is like, you're one of the only male comedians that I know that like actively tries to uplift um, female comedians. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, the only, the only reason I... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Don't laugh too quickly. The only reason I said it like that is because it's just unfortunate. It is really. No, no, no. I know. But it was also. I am also one of the only comedians I know who does that. It's actually, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say something that I think might surprise people to hear. But it is actually I see how hard it is because there are so few women doing it. There's just fewer women doing it. So therefore, there are fewer women who are, you know, like most male comedians suck. Oh my God. It's like, what percentage of any group of comedians is good? 2%. So 2% of a smaller pool, you have even less to work with. But it's not that women aren't funny. It's that women are like, exactly not as drawn to stand up for a myriad of systemic reasons. But those stats are the same. And then the stats for like dropping out um, and quitting are higher. And it's difficult in a lot more ways. So you get cut off with that as well. And then Mm. like the problem that the women who are really booked, you know, I'm putting you in female. I know you're trans, but I'm putting you in this category well, I, for the I, sake of I, the, my relationship to that word is so complicated. I'm yeah, I'm happy to be. I'm a female comic. Yeah, you're 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 a, you're a trans comic. I think you're also a female comic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, think I would say that I'm like because of the queer. way that you're perceived. Yeah, and I'm so still actively figuring it out. And like, anyway, sorry, this is not even to be that conversation. But, you, you, but yes, I'm a female comic. I'm operating this scene as a female comic. There, you're and, and I'm queer. You're yeah. so fucking booked. So the, like you know what I mean? It can be harder to actually make the lineups as diverse. Oh, oh, I you, see what you, you mean. It's yeah, not, I see what you mean. It's not a simple problem. The pipeline, the talent pipeline problem is not an easy problem to solve. If it were, we would have figured this out a long time ago. And this is yes. true for every single field. And because the numbers are so skewed, I think it's like if you want to book a diverse lineup by any metric, but let's just say by gender, it's like, you need to pay attention and actively do that. Right, exactly. You need to be like conscious of doing it. And so it's like, and not everyone is. It's kind of yeah. hard. It can be difficult. It's not as simple as people think it is. And you guys still do it. And most people don't. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I mean, it's just, it's kind of what you are saying, but you have to actively seek it out. Because otherwise, if you don't, you will naturally, because it's just like, what is it? I don't know what the actual ratio is, but it feels like nine to 10 women or men to women and com- yeah, women yeah. to men there's so many so many women there's in so many women in comedy nowadays there's so there's i can't even see women. another dude <laughs> <laughs> where are the dudes i'm looking for them. <laughs> i love that you're in 1934 for this whole podcast yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> i like that this podcast for you takes place in world war one <laughs> me with me with jet black hair dye and a comb what do you mean i'm wearing weather now what are you talking about you're andrew <laughs> Dice Clay as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're either a newsy or Andrew Dice Clay. That's a Ooh. reference no one's gonna get. I'm doing um, so many voices today. You really Ooh. are. <laughs> Was that fingering? No, this no, is no. his. Oh, this oh. is his. He has a like cigar on stage. Oh, okay. He's a, he's a man. Whoa, your voice got. Whatever wow. happened to being a man? <laughs> um, well, I assume that's what he's I'm doing. I'm really glad you're here. Um, yeah, let's I'm do intros, and then I want to throw in something a little different for the I'm pod so today. excited about this. I know. Different. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about I'm this, really too. I'm really excited, and special for you to start. Um, we're in the apartment. We're having gay sex with Jamie Wolf. I'm Ashley Gavin, cis gay white woman, she, her pronouns. This is probably coming out around when I go back on tour 
please come. I can, and if you're, if you're not in your area, let's just say L.A., San Diego, San Francisco, Richmond, Virginia, Albany, maybe Denver. I don't know. I don't know which ones. Oh, cool. But yeah, very cool. But if you're not in those areas, I'll text you when I'm in your city. And then as always, the hall monitor to keep me <laughs> from getting canceled. This week, they're at the bottom of the class, but they're the top of your dreams. The yeah. femboy top of your dreams. <laughs> Maddie Wiener. Hello. Woo. I'm Maddie Wiener. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I want to put that on the soundboard. <laughs> so, woo! <laughs> uh, I'm Maddie Wiener. I'm queer. I use she, they pronouns. I'm also a comic. Um, I'm on Instagram at Maddie T. Wiener if you want to get on my mailing list to find out when I go on tour. And I also Maddie write- Maddie to 30K. That would be sick as hell, actually. Um, and I have a Don't Tell set out if you want to watch that or a Comedy Central set. Just killing it across the board. Oh, shit. Do you mind introducing yourself in this format? Uh, and we can help you. If yes, you cis forgot. head white male. Um, he him pronouns. I he's um, reading off of his hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's much because I'm so sweaty. I'm so nervous. <laughs> um, I'm mm, sichet. <laughs> like I read cis hat wrong. Sai sheet. Um, male. I can't even say now. <laughs> <laughs> pronouns. My pronouns. Ham. 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 Oh, I think I'm clearing my throat here. Ham. I, I, I drew that up for myself. Too. Um. Well, I'm really glad you're here. You're a really good friend and a really good person. And no, I. We didn't. <laughs> what? No, I thought that was. Isn't that what I was supposed to do? Is yeah, there more? Oh, I, I needed there's to more say? to your intro. My bad. My bad. Cis hat white male. He him, him pronouns. Him. All right. At Jamie. What's your Instagram? Uh, at Jamie Wolf Comedy. Yeah. And you're on TikTok and stuff too. Sure. Yeah. Why, why, why not say that? <laughs> <laughs> we can say whatever. Uh, Twitter? <laughs> Twitter? <laughs> I'm just messing around. Twitter's Twitter. dead. Yeah, right? Twitter is, is so it gone? dead. Do we yeah, think yeah, it's gone? Twitter is yeah. dead, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, I thought it would be fun. We, we did the banter, but I don't know how much is going to remain in. So, And also, I, I desperately want to do this new segment that I came up yeah, with. Yeah. It's not exactly a genius segment. But some of you know, maybe actually none of you know. You think it's good? I'm sure someone else is doing this. I'm excited. And if someone else is doing this, let me know so I can give them credit for having thought of it first. But um, you you guys are familiar with the New York Times love questions. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first started dating Jen, Jen is super introverted and really takes a while to kind of, I, she explained to me, she's like, yeah, it takes me a minute to like warm up on people. And like, I was like feeling that from her when we first started dating. And it was also long distance at first because she was living in Boston. She was about to move. No, that's not true at all. The pandemic was about to happen. So she functionally moved in with me. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lived oh. together mostly like pretty much like off and on for like a month at a time. And then she'd go home and then- you know, we'd she'd COVID test, she'd go home, yeah. she COVID test, she'd come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we lived lived together during the pandemic, basically. And uh, but right before that was when we started dating. And I I had this weird feeling with her where I was like, I'm so drawn to her, I feel so connected to her, and I don't know her at all. Like I don't like what the best yeah. feeling in the world. Yeah. You think so? It's up there. Oh, it's gotta be up there. Yeah. That's such a nice Yeah. Yeah. Such a safe good feeling. And when you can't put your finger on it, you're just like, oh, it's like this person's soul. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're so right. And I and I had dinner with a friend about it. And my fr I was like, I just feel like I can't, like I'm having trouble getting to know her, but like I also feel like I have to keep getting to know her. And then I thought, oh, let's do the New York Times love questions on one of our upcoming dates, one of our very early dates. We did these questions and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do the three of us on every episode to do one of these New York Times love questions? Yes. <laughs> now, just, listener, it write well, the in. New York Time love questions. Should, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but if people yes. don't know. Oh, yes, explain What them. it is, it's yes. basically these questions that they wrote that you're supposed to sit down with someone and answer them, and they, I, I don't know if it make you fall in love with each other, but they're questions that, like, lead to facilitate, intimacy. Yeah. Yes, facilitate falling in love. And then they have different categories, like, for different dates. I don't know exactly how it works, but, like, the first however many are you know, for the first date and the second, however, you know, set two is more for the second date and set three is more for the third date or something. So how like are that. you going to progress through them? 
I don't know. Okay. I feel like it should depend on the on the guest. Yeah. We know each other quite well. We oh, so we start We deep. all know each other. Yeah. So yeah, we, we I think that we should start deep. Okay. This is a really good idea. Yeah, I'm I love already this. interested in hearing your answers. What about um, I think it also is it's it's interesting to have like emotional intimacy platonically with people. Like that is yes. also like a fun thing to dive into. Like I want to know what you guys are going to say and like I feel like it can still yeah. make you feel closer to people. Yeah, isn't that weird that like we would never do this with our friends, but it would actually be just as interesting to do with your friend as mm. with a romantic it partner. It really would. You and Lucas should do it. Yeah. Well, we're already in love, so we don't <laughs> I don't know why we would need to. Okay. Well, there's also the thing where you look into someone's eyes for 4 minutes and you're supposed we can't to like, do fall that. We can't do that. I mean, it's not a very audio friendly. No, it's Did not. Did you take an acting class? Did you do that in acting class? Similar things. I okay. love acting exercises just as like intimacy I exercises. I want to yeah. do them for fun with people. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, like good. repeating words back and forth. I love like intense intimacy and it sucks that you have to fuck to get there. I mean, that's kind of your <laughs> joke about it, but I'm like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to be like yeah, anyway. Oh my God, you're so right. I should actually take the joke more about intimacy and like making intimacy. Sorry, that's just a great I would angle. love to stare into someone's eyes for four minutes, but yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. sucking their dick. I'm a yeah, weirdo. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's do this one. What is your most treasured memory? Mm. I probably should have picked one that I like kind of had an instinct about. Fuck. That's a really, I've never actually thought about narrowing it down to one. Do you have one off the top of your head? Cause I actually can't. I do. Okay. Okay. I would like to hear you. I go. just, um, I just thought of it and I'm definitely going to cry. Um, in my solo show that I'm writing right now, I talk about this memory, but, um, a few weeks before my father, oh my God, I'm already crying. What the fuck? Maybe we shouldn't do this. <laughs> Maybe this is like a horrible segment you idea. You don't want to do it? No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to power okay. through. But I'm going to be very vulnerable. Also, I cry like every day. But uh, I right before my father passed away, like maybe weeks before my father passed away, we did one of those dinners that you do with just the one parent. You know, the one parent dinner yeah. where you're like, it feels special, like, oh, do you want to go to dinner with me, just us? And we went to this restaurant that my family would go to a lot, and it was, like, you know, very, very special. And for whatever reason, I was, like, 11, I decided at this dinner I was going to express to him that I wanted to be an actor when I grew up. In fact, that I wanted to do it now, and I wanted to be a professional actor, you know, as soon as possible. And my dad... I was very nervous. I'm not sure why I was so nervous. Maybe because the dream felt so big to me. Yeah. It felt so important to me. Mm -hmm. And I was really scared they wouldn't be supportive or try to help me do it. And my father said to me, I just want your life to be like a bowl of cherries. I want you to be able to pick what, what you want to do and like, let's like do it. And, um, you know, obviously he passed away a few weeks after that. And it just, it's so special to me because like I got to share what felt like mm. my life's purpose with him. And then, and he gave me his support before he went. Yeah, I think that memory just, I'm so glad I have that. Yeah. Wow. Sorry if I fucked yours guys, your guys is up. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really, it's really, I never got to come out to him, you know? So like be, to be able to have shared something with him about my future adult life. Mm. Obviously I'm not an actor, but you know, this is what I wanted. Close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my memory. This is get, this is. That was a great answer. Really good. I mean, that was like beautiful. Thanks. That was really beautiful. Thanks for saying that with us. I'm tearing up. I don't <laughs> want to go. Maddie, do you want to go? Mine was really not as like emotional. The first thing that popped into my head, so I'll just go with the gut instinct, was like my first kiss. Oh, no, thank you, man. Oh, no, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, your yeah. first kiss? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, my chain was tearing up. Was it with your dad who died two weeks later? Because <laughs> if not, I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to say my first kiss. I like, I didn't have my first kiss till I was 18. And I think it's like, wow, oh, if we're going to really like, like uh, vulnerable, like I think my like core insecurity as a person is that I'm like the weird, ugly girl. And that was like, oh. and I, you know what I mean? I was 18 and nobody had ever kissed me. And it was like, and I was, I was already in love with this guy. We'd been friends for years. And I was like, 
And it was just the first time in my life where I felt like, oh, somebody like that I want really wants me. And like that could happen. And it broke this thing in my life of like, that's never going to happen for me. Or I'm not a person that that happens to. And like, you know, it's simple. It was my first kiss, but it was like really. Uh, where was it? It was in the back of my car. <laughs> <laughs> and we went Your to. Your car. So you picked him up. It was Halloween. It was Halloween, my senior year of high school. And we went to this. Okay. So early 18 though. You had just turned 18. Yeah, I had just turned 18. Okay. Like a couple weeks before. And we went to this like ice cream shop that was like on this farm that I love going to. And we just parked in the parking lot and like kissed in the back of the car. Wow. It was really sweet. Did, were you already dating? Did you know that he liked you? We, he had asked me on a date. <gasps> okay. And then we were hanging out on Halloween. It wasn't like officially a date. And then we just drove back into town and like walked around the grocery store, like holding hands, like the 24 hour oh. grocery oh, store. That's such a and it was so cute. He like reached out to hold my hand and he was like, is this okay? And I was like, yeah. And we like held hands and just like sat and talked. And like, he's also a comedian and we're like friends now still. He's also a comedian? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you're still friends with him? Yeah. Holy crap. He lives Matt, in a different- Maddie is it, just eternal kindness and love. Yeah. Well, it was awesome. one of those like sweet, Actually, oh, okay, now this might make me cry. I remember one time, sorry, this is a lot of memories, but it's all kind of, but we were um, sitting at a friend's house. It was like a bunch of comics. And my friend was like, do you think if you guys break up, like, would you still be friends? And we both looked at each other and we were like, of course we would still be friends. Wow. Like, that's not even a question that this person's going to be in my life. And then we broke up and like, obviously it's hard and whatever. And he was in a different city. And then recently it had been six years since we talked I think I did mention this is the same guy. And we had a moment where we were like, can we like be friends again and be in each other's lives? And I just like wow. broke down crying because I was like, it took six it's years, so but it's like nice to have a pure relationship. And to be like, there's people that like your soul is like connected to. And even if it takes a really, really long time to come back around, like, I don't know. I think the string is long that connects people mm. and you don't have to like worry that I'm going to throw on. <laughs> anyway, that's no, that was, that, was, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> What's was your most beautiful. treasured memory? Um, also, wait, I have to say, I think a lot of people that will resonate with them. Really? Will this ever happen for me? Especially with queer people. Because I think you're like, you know, if you come out late, later in life or, you know, you feel like, oh, am I going to be able to navigate this and meet someone? Especially some of our late in life queer listeners, which I know there are a ton. I think that'll really resonate. Mm -hmm. It's also, yeah, that's such a pure, innocent, beautiful time. Yeah, like the it really first is. Kiss with someone you like, that's different. Some people do it wrong. Right, I did it wrong. My first what kiss was, was with a boy, so it, it didn't <laughs> feel the way, my, my first kiss with a What's girl. What's so wrong about that, actually? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so um, what was the story of that? Have you told it on the pod? I have, I have, but we, we can come back. But what's your okay. most treasured memory? Oh, uh, it's probably um, when I was a kid, we would go to, um, we would have one vacation a year. We would go to these like terrible, um, <laughs> like, like literally flea and bug infested cabins <laughs> um, with like spiders and we would get uh, really, really, really bad sunburns. Like Where, so where bad. was it? On uh, Cape Cod. Okay, Cape cool. Cape Cod and like. Just a place that I'm I'm legitimately not sure how it was illegal that we were allowed to live there. <laughs> like it doesn't seem like it was more like squatting than renting, but it, we were renting. Got it. And everyone else there was from a different country. Like it was all like European people. There was like a several cottages. It was like eight or nine. And they were all from like Europe because they had been bamboozled and swindled and tricked. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the one American family like. This is no, like, we we're, love we're this. Coming. Yeah, exactly. We're back. Yeah. We've been here every year. That's exactly This right. is our hut. Yeah. And it was just this pure time of like, it's me and my family in like a really nice, happy place all together as a unit, all having fun together, um, which I, I feel like I didn't have much growing up because my parents are divorced. Oh. So it represents like a family that I feel that I didn't get much of, but I got some of. The whole family that. would go mom and dad split up? Not dad. Oh, okay. Not dad. I don't think, I don't know who he is. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> I may as well not know him. Yeah. But anyway, 
But yeah, there is something about those summer experiences that like represents family and consistency. Yes. At least camp was like that for me. Sounds like maybe yeah. this experience was like, yes. yeah, you just like had stability and consistency. And like, even though it's a fucking hut, mm -hmm. like it d doesn't matter. And it was fun. And we were all around together. Other times in the summer, it would be like, I'm at home. We don't have activities to do because we weren't like doing that, like travel sports or whatever. So it was just like me at home. And then my brothers were old enough. They were off with their friends. And I was just right. like bored as right. shit all summer, right. like reading a hundred books. Yeah. Because I'm just bored. Yeah. Um, but that was like a really fun, active time. Like when we'd go up to the, we'd all play together and like we'd, you know, go to the beach together and just play all day and have great food, I thought. But it was, <laughs> I was just like a watermelon. <laughs> we'd have the finest watermelon. Just the absolute, uh, I don't have, I don't have a riff. There's something really touching and like, <laughs> There's just something really touching and like kind of like beautiful and like tragic and sweet about the fact that all of us said that all of our favorite memories, we sort of qualified it with like, because this was one of the only times I had this thing. It's interesting that that's like what becomes like so special. Should I, should I talk about gay sex now or? <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, let's get into the gay sex. That was really intense. That was so yeah. intense. And is I'm not sure that that is the tone of this podcast. But what, what, right in, like, what did you think of that? I think I can find a way to, to, come, to achieve the balance that this podcast has in the future with Wait, that. We so, do so how did, did, is this how it went when you did it with Jen? Was it that deep and that yeah, intense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because that felt like a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, feel, I feel that I am in love with you guys. I yeah. honestly feel that a little bit. Yeah, yeah it did yeah. like open all of us up. Yeah. yeah. We should do this with our friends more. We really should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just, I kind of hate today. Like, I hate the way we interact with people. You know? What do you mean today? Phones and stuff. Oh, God. It's terrible. Yeah. Weirdly, I'll try, yeah. I'll try to be better about if I see something that I like or that's funny and not posting it on my Instagram story, but like sending it to individual friends that I think will like it mm. to be like, I'm reaching out to you in particular, not like you saw it, you viewed it. You know what, what I mean? about calling? I call people a lot. I call people a lot. That, that was so funny great. where you were like how we communicate today. And Maddie was like, yeah, the pro I've found a solution. Instagram send, DMs. Send someone up. So, <laughs> I sort of kick it old school and <laughs> send someone a meme. <laughs> if you're frustrated with like, uh, just being online too much, try DMing your friends on, in on Instagram. <laughs> I know I felt it. So as a 35 year old, I was like, okay. <laughs> I think I, I think yeah, I see I'm why fine. the kids are dying. <laughs> um, Listener, are you listening to our Patreon exclusive, You're Having Gay Sex? Well, here's a sneak peek of what you missed last week. Good kiss, but not triggering many difficult feelings for me. Just appreciation. But yeah. <laughs> like, Honestly, uh, I'm just grateful to be here. <laughs> I was about to say, like a good piece of art. <laughs> oh, makes you think. But yeah, I just got a text from her saying that the kiss is still spooking through her mind. Spooking through her mind? Yes. Haunting her would be the appropriate word, but sure. <laughs> spooking through her mind also works, I guess. <laughs> so Look, not everyone's a writer. Yeah, you know. <laughs> there are four bonus episodes a month of this series, You're Having Gay Sex, on our Patreon at the $10 tier, and then two at the $5 tier. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Well, I, I brought a gay sex story specifically because I think I predicted what your gay sex story is going to be. You, I'm sure you did. But I have a finger blast from the past. Woo! As we sometimes say, uh, I was going to say RIP Kate Sisk, Sisk, but just shout out Kate Sisk. Um, my finger blast from the past is a time that I was back in college. And you tell me what you think was going on here. I had a roommate, mm -hmm. okay, that I did not... I was not super compatible with, okay? We had a three room situation. 
we had two people in one room, two people in the other room, and then the middle room was like a quad common area. Mm -hmm. None of these rooms were particularly big. But basically, me and this roommate, uh, I think the roommate really wanted to have a friendship with me, and I had no interest and they took offense to this. Was this freshman year? Was it an assigned roommate? Yes, it was an assigned roommate okay. situation. Got it. And we had like a tight little room, like head to toe. Like my bed was like against the width, like the back wall and her bed was like right down by my feet, you know? Okay. And you went where, Hampshire? I went. <laughs> Just kidding, because it's What is really your problem? Gay. <laughs> it's gayer. I went to Bryn Mawr. Whoa, that is <laughs> a gayer. A women's college. That is There's gayer, really only yeah. one co college that's gayer, and I think it's Smith. But oh, Smith, um, yeah. Smith is pretty... Smith is actually so gay, it's trans. <laughs> <laughs> Smith is like... Smith is trans, and Bryn Mawr's gay. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know about any more. So um, gay, it's trans. <laughs> well, you, you know what I mean. I, I don't mean it in that, like pipeline way but like it's just it's the you want to get gayer than gay you get trans As someone sliding rapidly down the pipeline <laughs> i think that's fine yeah so <laughs> yeah maddie from 20 miles deep in the pipeline <laughs> it's okay <laughs> you can say it i saw one picture of scarlett johansson when i was nine years old and now i'm doing exercises to make my forearms bigger. I mean, it's a fucking, it's a, it's one of those water slides that's almost vertical. That's the pipeline. Well, I, I have my legs crossed and my hands behind my head and goggles strapped to my eyes flying down the pipeline. It's in the, it's on the pyramid in Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at the bottom, Elliot Page is the lifeguard making sure that you don't <laughs> get a concussion or something. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to contribute. Uh, but I think the thing about the pipeline, with the pipeline, it just feels easier to come out as certain things because mm. there's just relative, we know this, there's more transphobia than there is homophobia. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, we can argue about this all day, but like at the end of the day, the, the most vitriol is towards trans people. For sure. Mm. So I think when you're thinking about a pipeline, it's not that people are actually going through steps. Yeah. It's like just be the, the ability to even come out. Mm. It's a little bit easier in certain circumstances, you know, based on location, yada, yada. And it also might be the way that you find the community. Like it's exactly. much easier to find something that makes you go, maybe I'm bisexual. And then you get into this thing and then you, and then you start learning more and you're like, oh, maybe it's more this. Maybe yes. it's a gender thing. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but anyway... I, everyone at Bryn Mawr is on the pipeline. <laughs> Whether or not they're getting off at the first stop or whatever, I don't know. Maybe you could pick which way you're going to go. Some might say Bryn Mawr is the pipe. <laughs> exactly. Yes. It, um, with, it, liberals and conservatives are both just protesting different pipelines. Like one is gas and one is this. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Um, so I have this roommate. Nothing about being gay or whatever has come up. I know she's had a boyfriend because at one point during our roommate, our roommate existence together, she called a roommate meeting for all of the roommates to tell us that she had had an abortion. That's where my joke comes from. Oh wow! Yeah, not wow. no, not at school. She had had like two years prior had an abortion and wanted Whoa. to let us know. So like, I I assumed her to be straight. I didn't really think about it. We didn't really talk about it. We were not close. Mm -hmm. Then someone came to visit, a friend of someone down the hallway came to visit. Okay. And she started hanging out with the friend's friend a lot. The friend's friend is? From a different school, a woman. F okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From a different school or something. Okay. I don't know. Maybe like the high school that we were freshmen, maybe it was the high school. I, don't, I, I have no idea who this person is. Yep. But they're hanging out a ton. They're hanging out a lot. In fact, they are hanging out without the friend from down the hallway. Huh. They're hanging out solo. So I was like, what the fuck is going on yep. between these two? And then the friend, ah, I should give these people names. The yeah. person that my roommate, give my roommate a name. Miss Abortion. Miss Abortion. Perfect. I love that drag queen. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that a drag queen? Inducing a miscarriage by doing a death drop is like very funny. Miss <laughs> so Miss Abortion. <laughs> And then down the With hall, the sash. <laughs> <in> the <crowd. laughs> 
down the hall we have um, a hallmate. We'll just say my hallmate. Oh, this person's in college. Yeah. Oh. My hallmate down the hall and her friend is Sarah. Okay. <laughs> so Sarah comes and and the hallmate comes up to me and is like, hey, uh, I just want to ask you something. Would it be cool if Sarah, oh no, no, no. It started by my roommate, Miss Abortion, saying to me, hey, I'm gonna, s- <laughs> I'm gonna- My s- finest work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Miss Abortion says to me, hey, I'm gonna sleep in hallmate's room tonight. And I was like, huh. okay. Okay, you don't have to tell me that. You yeah. know, like you don't need permission to go and sleep yeah. in hallmate's room. Yep. But thanks for letting me know. Mm-hmm. And then something must have changed because I get back, I get back to my dorm. I walk into my room. The door faces the, uh, my roommate's bed. I open the door. Sarah and Miss Abortion are spooning so delicately facing the door. Wow. I immediately turned, they're not naked or anything. I don't think it was dark. I immediately turned back around, closed the door. I'm like, okay, well, I guess um, I'm actually sleeping somewhere else. In, it hallmate's, turned, room. in hallmate's room. I'm somewhere on some air mattress. So <laughs> I get the reverse. Now, I don't really know. There's no big climax to this story other than that we never spoke about it. Wow. Like we never, Miss Abortion and I never spoke about it after that. I think I would have appreciated a sock on the door. Wait, so did Miss Abortion keep seeing Sarah? No, Sarah was gone. It was just a brief visit. Never again. I don't even know. Oh, you know what? I mean, some straight girls do like cuddle with each other. I will say she became, she did hook up with women after that. And oh. I totally forgot. Who miss abortion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have, I just remembered that now, actually. I just, I actually, we lived on a hall together again and I walked by their room once. <laughs> I walked by, I walked by miss abortion's room and I heard, I actually heard her having sex and one of them, two of them saying, I love you to the other one. And I actually, <laughs> I actually felt physically ill from the entire thing. I have, I have witnessed this. I have been adjacent to Miss Abortion sex <laughs> so many times. Why did you, you didn't remember that at all? I didn't remember it. They didn't and remember I was actually going to say to you guys, of the story. you think they're gay. I was like, they're gay, right? But actually now that I remember the full trajectory of everything, yes, it was gay. They're gay for sure. Like <laughs> yeah, 100% yeah, gay. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. But isn't it kind of funny like to go visit your friend at college and then spend the whole time like hooking up with some random person, <laughs> like not your friend. Yeah, how did your hallmate feel about it? I, all this? you know, I should have checked in with my hallmate, but we weren't really that close either. Yeah, your hallmate just going, "What the fuck?" Yeah, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, seriously. And what the fuck, Miss Abortion? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, Miss Abortion? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's my gay sex from this week. Listener, it's almost that time again. It's time for a new you. And what better way to start than getting a good night's sleep on a Helix mattress? Some of you might be thinking, man, this is some weird copy. But it's not. (laughs) You know the feeling I'm talking about. And that feeling can be replicated by a good night's sleep on a Helix mattress. I've been sleeping on my Helix for a while now. It's the best sleep I've ever gotten. I absolutely love it. And don't just take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress pick by GQ and Wired Magazine. It's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. Are you still scared? Well, you get 100 nights to try it, and there's a 10 to 15 year warranty depending on your model, okay? So no matter what you have going on, Helix has got something for you, and you can always try a different one if you don't like that one. You are, But I guarantee you, you're gonna find a mattress that you love. And right now, listeners of the show can get up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Jamie, did you have gay sex this week? 
This week I didn't have any gay sex, unfortunately. I'm so sorry to hear yeah, that. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. One day. <laughs> but I have a story about gay sex. I'm so excited to hear it. I The I, audience loves when we have straight men come on and tell stories about gay sex. So I didn't have gay sex, but I was extremely close to gay sex. <laughs> Very close to gay, like physically in proximity <laughs> to gay sex for a while. The thing is, a lot of us are particularly with gay men, but we don't know it. It's kind of like how you like eat eight spiders a year, but you wouldn't know. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> that is so fucking funny. That and, and you know how that's like a nightmare that you have as a child? You're like, oh my God, did I eat a spider last mm -hmm. night? Like, I don't know, it's in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how Republicans feel. You know, you know that eight times a year, behind, just behind one wall, there's gay sex. <laughs> Literally right behind that they wall. You don't know. They could be doing it yeah. right now. You know they that shit just gets it. in your mouth when you sleep. <laughs> That's why, that's why the Marines sleep with their eyes open. They have exoskeletons <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was so fucking funny. Dude. Yeah. Um, really so you good. were really close to some gay sex. When I was in college, also as a signed roommate situation, I had two roommates who were best friends in high school. They requested to be roommates. And they were best friends in high school. Yeah. And they ended up going to the same school. Yes. And they requested to be roommates. They requested to be roommates, and I was the third roommate matched with them. That's so fucked up that they wouldn't put you in a quad or some kind of bigger roommate situation or would have had them be in a double. I think that's quite rude. Sorry, just speaking as someone who used to be a camp counselor, mm -hmm. that's really tough. It made no to sense. To be the third wheel no to sense two best all. friends. Yeah, it made no sense. Like, none at all. And they're they're from a very cons not conservative but very Catholic Christian area. Okay. So in in Southern California. Okay. Um, and they were just really good buddies, just really good <laughs> friends. Okay. Sounds like the start of a gay porn, doesn't it? Really it really does. does. Or just any lesbian love story. Did yeah. you? Now yeah. I understand where this is going, so I'm just going to ask a question that kind of like reveals the ending. But yeah, did you sense anything between them on day one of school? I did. I not only did I not sense anything between them, I didn't put together what was going on until Thanksgiving break, when I went home and told my family, <laughs> and they went, "You know they're gay, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "No, they they're just two guys that like to cuddle with each other, but when they go to bed, <gasps> they were cuddling in. Did they feel closeted to you? Like what? What were these Ye guys like? Yeah." absolutely felt closeted felt like they couldn't talk or be open about their sexuality as a result of the the religious upbringing right. they had yeah and the, and the fact that their their environment like their home and their families were not accepting of that right so they both seemed were they very masculine presented no no okay uh, pretty guys. flamboyant a little flamboyant not very yeah but a little bit flamboyant, I would say. You're Is also that okay at NYU. to say? I'm not, I'm oh, not. it wasn't NYU. Oh. This was UC Santa Barbara. I thought you went to NYU. I, I transferred like oh, okay. halfway through college. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. What is, what is the take on flamboyant? Is that offensive? Is it pejorative? I don't know why I'm being. Well, you're. Danny, can you do, some, <laughs> can you do a quick Google? We have Danny in the studio today uh, helping from the Chosen Family podcast because Alex is having some personal problems. Um, but Alex will be back soon. Alex. I didn't Poor mean to Alex. sound offended. Also, you were looking at me, but I was just, I don't know. No, no, no. You're not offended at all. It does feel pejorative. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know what you meant to say, but. <laughs> what did I say? The way you said it. No, no, no. You're not offended at all. <laughs> anyway, pejor like you're just telling her how she's feeling. <laughs> okay, reading, we have Danny on mic. I'm reading that it has negative homophobic oh, subtext. Oh, uh, you have to leave now. Yeah, but, but I don't know what what if a gay person says it? I don't. Well, he's not gay. I'm so, not gay. Oh. Yeah. So they were after I said flamboyant. Anything I now say seems offensive. <laughs> 
No, you know, you know what I love about this podcast yeah. is like we try to navigate these things in real time because we know everybody fucks up mm. and people try to pretend like they don't fuck up and then Google something later or whatever. Like, and everybody- then, like we couldn't be mad because I'd be like, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we That's don't know the word, true, but like, but I I get what you're saying. They, th- I, yeah, I don't know how else to put it. They they were maybe feminine energy. Yeah, yeah, they were they were feminine feminine energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just the, speaking code. They uh, didn't play lacrosse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't hate women if you get what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> but they did hate women but they did <laughs> hate women because they actually- were very afraid of women oh okay yeah they were very afraid of women when i would the only time that's so okay but well, you, you were gonna say something well i was gonna ask like but even though they had feminine energy, you didn't pick up that they were gay, I, which I think is this your saving grace here. I did not, because because both of them had mentioned having girlfriends in high school, and they and I I um I was eighteen years old, and I was like, I actually had a lot of friends in high school who uh, were also gay, but I didn't know it. Right. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't think it was strange for them to be acting. Mm. Mm -mm, in a feminine way. (laughs) Mm. It's so funny because they walked away from the interaction. They were like, we have a girlfriend. And you're like, yeah, me too. And they wink and you go, oh, they're straight. And they go, oh, he's also gay. (laughs) (laughs) They definitely did think I was gay. So they were, so the first month, nothing was amiss. We were all sleeping in our, in our beds separately. (laughs) And then one night they were just like cuddling up, watching a movie in their bed, which isn't that weird because like there's a phone and they're just watching a movie on the phone. Okay, okay. So they kind of have to be, where else can you do that? Close in the room? proximity, sure, yeah. Every close proximity. And they then- turn off the TV, they watch it on <laughs> the phone. <laughs> we, don't, we have to be close to each other if it's on the phone, so we should watch on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, we could watch They literally my- take a scissor to the, like, the cord. Yeah, the- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go watch on my laptop. He takes it, smashes it on the ground. <laughs> Shoot, it's broken. We have to watch in my bed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so they were just like doing that one night and I was like, yeah, that's not that weird. And I, I fell asleep cause I was in my bed when they were doing that. And I, I woke up halfway through the night, the night and they were in the bunk across the room and they were like kind of cuddling like a little bit, like very close to each other asleep. Oh. And I was like, okay. They just fell asleep watching the, the movie. And I swear <laughs> to God that it was that you're was, like their parent. Yes. You're like their homophobic parent. Yeah, like, they just totally fell asleep until I was watching the movie. <laughs> this is totally fine. I do that all the time. <laughs> it's not gay. My kid's not gay. It's Such deep fellas. denial. Oh, probably a snake bit him on his dick and he's saving his life right now. <laughs> <laughs> he has throat cancer that can only be cured via cum. <laughs> I'm cheering them on. Come, 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 come. <laughs> he needs to be saved. Don't die. <laughs> like, what? I'll come too. They think uh, like they think I'm gay. And, you and think I, you're I, helping? You're trying to help. Them. Okay, <laughs> I'll help. I'll, I'll get more come in there. <laughs> so I was like super. I was super in super in denial. So October all the way. This started early October. I wouldn't say denial. I think you just haven't figured it out. Haven't yeah, because denial it out. is so funny because it sounds like there's an emotional stake if you're like, I'm pushing it down. Yeah, that's that true. That a guy yeah, yeah. I kind of know is gay with a guy. <laughs> well, the, the only- I think you're only, right that it's more that you just didn't figure it out. The only thing that I will say added another element of, of like, of um, hoping it wasn't true is I was living with them for like nine months, maybe 10 months even. Yeah. So I was just hoping it wasn't true because I don't want to live in a room with any couple, gay yeah. or straight. Yeah. In a room with them. No, yeah. That That is a very difficult roommate situation. Yes. So I was just like, uh, no, they're not gay. They're just like guys who cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes make other noises too. Guys who cuddle is- <laughs> guys- And sometimes make other noises too. It's so funny. That's God. legit what I thought. I was like, sometimes they're waking up at night and their throat, they have to clear their throat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
so fucking That's funny. Legitimately, how, what, what I, I was thought. gonna say. <laughs> legitimately, uh, it might be too late for this riff, but you guys know how I wrote the curriculum for girls who code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys who cuddle is my toxic masculinity <laughs> uh, nonprofit that I run to get rid of toxic masculinity. That's a, honestly curriculum. a good idea. Um, guys who cuddle. Yeah. But wait, how long? How many times do you think you heard them doing stuff, and you were just like, "I'm not sure what that is." The first month in October, it must have been like once or twice a week I heard sounds but they were they were sleeping in the same bed every night oh <laughs> every <wow>. single night <laughs> and and a couple times in early November this is like a month into them sleeping together every night I they were like Jamie do you want to come cuddle <gasps> And I was like, no, I'm good down here. It's like a, it's like a one, it's like a twin bed. So three of us won't really fit. <laughs> I love, the, oh man, I was this like, actually breaks. There's not really space for that. Do you but think they you were trying to, ahead. this is either heartbreaking or horny. Do you think they were trying to fuck, like have a three way? Or do you think that they were so claws afraid yeah. of being found out that they were like, we should extend yeah. an wow. invitation to James. Cause I remember feeling this closeted. Yeah. Like, do you remember like the extend an invitation to Jamie so that it feels like it's our, our roommate cuddle sesh. Oh, interesting. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, This yeah. is what I don't think the straight, like the straight in this situation realizes that, that the denial is so deep that you would like create circumstances mm. around you. So that it isn't. Wow. So that it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or like, it's just like a funny thing that we do. Yeah, like yeah. Like what you're saying, basically. Yes, I, wow. I totally get what you mean. Not that I would do that but i get why they might yes, ask yeah. that in that situation yeah i've been in similar situations before maybe not sexually but situations where i'm like okay if we're all doing this then i'm not the weird one right exactly or i'm not different or yeah. it seem like i'm flirting with this person or yes yeah. yes, yes yes that's a great wow example. that's a really good that's yeah a, that's a perfect it's example. a perfect example i mean she's a fucking genius yeah, she's a genius um, but but <laughs> we just call you delicate genius from now on, <laughs> like from for, uh, Kid Stanza okay. rather than the hall monitor. Okay. Um. <laughs> so then, well, your family's like, they're fucking gay, so dude. So I go back for Thanksgiving and I'm describing my roommate situation and every single person, I didn't even get why. I told my brother and he was like, oh my God, you have to tell everyone that. <laughs> and he didn't even tell me like why I had to tell everyone. Just that you're not, I needed- you're not, you're, you're accidentally outing them. Yes, yes. Well, they, well it's not really outing because your family doesn't know your roommates and they're yeah. not going to tell anybody. Yeah. But it's actually really funny that you're like, isn't it weird that my roommates cuddle and everyone else is like, gay? Yeah. And, 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 yeah, yeah, w- yeah without yeah, you yeah. even knowing? Yes. They were like behind closed doors laughing about it. <laughs> like everyone I told would laugh. And well, they're laughing I at was, you. Yeah. They're laughing you're, that you don't know what's going on. They're definitely not laughing at they're gay act, people. They're actually <laughs> two guys. Yeah, the they're actually bullying they're you for me, not yeah. being gay in a way. In a- <laughs> they're they're making fun of you that you're so straight that you haven't figured out. Yeah, that's, it's almost reverse bullying. That's exactly right. They're they're, they're really calling you a virgin. Is what's happening. <laughs> 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 that's yeah that's super accurate yeah. in, in retrospect and then my mom was the next day that was on thanksgiving day i told like all of the people and i didn't get really why it was i got that it was weird that they cuddled but i didn't get why people were like laughing about it and then the next day my mom took a walk with me and she was like so do you think that your roommates might be gay like she had to like <laughs> break news to me <laughs> And I, I, I didn't, I was super in, I was like, no, they're not gay. Like they're definitely not gay. And then I went back to school and like the second night they were, you know, um, yeah. Uh, sucking each other's penises <laughs> so loud that it woke me up <laughs> to put it delicately. There was so much slobbing on the knob that I was recalled from my unconscious state. <laughs> You know what's so funny about this? The way you tell this story too, like you don't want to seem homophobic, but it is like a little bit disrespectful for them to constantly be having sex. I know. Some sex, look, it happens. It's a roommate situation. It's complicated. There's a lack of privacy. People slip up. Yeah. But night after night Night. without letting you know. I mean, after Thanksgiving break, uh, they hadn't seen each other and they were... Uh, they were making up for lost time. What can you say? <laughs> so I was like really loud and I was like, guys, could you be quiet? 
Um, <laughs> or no, no, I didn't say that. I actually, I remember exactly. I went, um, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Just the wrong tone. It's, it's more of like a who's next kind of tone than a, <laughs> than a please stop tone. And then my roommate was like, uh, would you like to join? And, Are you serious? Yeah. And I was like, no, thank you. I have a test tomorrow, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is so bad because it implies it's like just not the right time, <laughs> but that I am open to the idea. Oh, no, I'm busy right now. Yeah. yeah. Circle back. Yes, exactly. If <laughs> maybe if it snows, it's it's into. Santa Barbara. If it snows, <laughs> um, but maybe it's what you're saying, to be honest. They were into you, though. <laughs> <laughs> at that no, it point, might be what you're saying. But at that is, point, the, the man's the man's dick is in your mouth. If I do this to everyone, it's not gay. It's well, no. Yeah, I think at that I feel point, like at that point it's uh, like they were trying they yeah. They thought that what's you just gay actually about wanted sucking to- a man's penis. <laughs> 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 no, I, I definitely yeah, I get what you're saying. They they, they did want me to join. So <laughs> <laughs> no denying that. <laughs> so they just start doing that every night, <laughs> like every night. And it wakes me up a lot. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. I get woken up a lot by, for lack of a better term, aggressive blow jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right after that. <clears throat> no, but anyway, I, uh, are they so, together? Are so they that married? Was going, um, they're still friends. So I don't know what happened. Oh, are they out? No. Oh. No, no, it's really not going to happen. Oh, that makes me yeah. sad. Yeah. Oh, it's this really is actually sad. a really tragic ending to a very delightful story. Or they're they're married. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's so sad. Oh, man. Then it, then it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> then the happy thing You guys, thing is I think true. their most treasured memories might be those, these times. Those, those times, those freshman year nights. Okay, that was I was meant for that to be funny, but that's just deeply, oh, I was, I was, <laughs> deeply upsetting to you guys. It, it wouldn't be freshman year nights because they kept living together every year after that. So it would be sophomore, junior, and senior year oh, nights. Wow. Yeah. In fact, mine would be the, this would be the worst memory for them. <laughs> that fucking guy kept, <laughs> that guy who gives a corner. shit about your test? I want to come in my... My guy's mouth. <laughs> they can't say boyfriend. My guy's mouth. My guy. Yeah, my, my, guys. Guys. my bros. My bro's mouth. My quarterback's mouth. Like trying to make it straight. <laughs> Did you ever talk to them about it, or? I just no. I didn't speak to them about in in so many terms because they were so in denial about right. what was going on. In a they kind would, of way, like even though they were doing what they were doing, kind of fucking you up. Like very very kind of you not to. To just let them know. do their own thing. I didn't know what to do. And I, I told my RA and like, they were like, maybe we could get you a different room. You got to submit. But I was like, I don't want to tell like the school. I don't know what would yeah. happen. Yeah. Like if I file a complaint against that, I was really worried because I knew their family was not approving. Mm. So oh. I, that was so, really thoughtful. Of yeah. You very like, thoughtful. Yeah. But then what I did was, um, I started to yell. No, no, no. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just doing the worst thing. <laughs> I beat them up. Well, well, <laughs> that's actually, kicked the shit out of them so they couldn't come back to school. That's a good transition to my next story, which is not what you think <laughs> based on what I just said. But after uh, I, I go away for one week um, with my brother on a road trip during school, like during the school year, because I was a terrible student. I'd literally just left for a week and we just drove across the country. And when I came back, my friends who lived in the rooms around me were like, dude, something happened in your, in your, like there was like a huge physical fight in your room when you were gone. And like, I get, and I was like, what? And they were like, like we heard them like yelling and like shit breaking. And I came back and, and like one of the closet <gasps> doors was like, like off its hinges and like destroyed. I don't even and understand how you would fight with someone where the door gets involved. I, was, I, was, I thought it was sex. And yeah, I think, I mean, I assume it was sex. I think it was sex. I think it was, <laughs> oh, my bad. I assume it was the Rough first. sex. I'm so dumb. Because before then, they, would, they had only been blowing each other. But I'm assuming, uh, what I was assuming is they, they tried anal sex. Oh. Is that unfair? I don't, I don't know. I mean, that'd be, it, that'd be something where you'd be like, I got to have the lights on and stand like you can't do that secretly quietly in a this you know under the covers you would need the whole room you need a full room for anal sex you really do you need a separate <laughs> you need a full room, room. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, this one is a little small for this. Even this room's a little small for anyone. <laughs> we would need like twice the square footage. <laughs> um, incredi- so incredible. I guess I'm story. assuming at the time I was like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Maybe a lover's quarrel. That's what we joked about with my friends. Because by that point, this was after winter break and into the next quarter of school, like m- like February times. So I was like, all my friends knew it was an inside joke. My roommates were gay. And oftentimes I ended up sleeping in my friend's beds when they were gone right. with their girlfriend. Or like they'd be like, hey, man, I'm going to crash on my girlfriend tonight. You can sleep in my bed to leave to leave the guys to, to, to you know, place, to get some football. <laughs> to get some football, yeah. <laughs> to put it straightly. <laughs> to put it straightly. <laughs> For, to leave the guys to scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they... Uh, what was I going to say? So they had the lover's quarrel. That's what we referred to it. That's what I, I figured it was. Group. Yeah. And they, um, when I came back, I was like, I had, my friends had told me that before I saw them. And so I walked in the room and like the door was off its hinges. I was like, what happened? Like, is everything all right? And they were like, and they <laughs> they both had agreed on a lie. They were like, he slipped. He was silly. And then the other guy was like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm so silly. I just like slipped into the door. Slipped, slipped into his broke. his butthole. <laughs> I'm picturing like the the Winklevoss twins from the social network. <laughs> I oh, also really? was weirdly picturing like a set of really similar guys. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. It was two very short Latino men. Okay. Was that to true? Change it. What? Truly? Oh, sorry. The way I said it sounded like a bit. Did sound it sound like a bit. It was two short. Latinx men. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That and so it goes even deeper, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, poor guys. Um, so, yeah, they were just slipping all around the room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Slipping into doors and. That's great. I, slipping I wanna, into one another. Right. And if you know why the door came off the hinges, because that's that's really Have puzzling you to me. Broken anything during sex? Because one time I. Did you break something? I broke a bed. Oh, let's go. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com, go sign up, and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things, and I will let you know, okay? Because there's a lot of cities coming, and i just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do. I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. <laughs> Maddie, did you have gay sex this week? When did you no, make the No, but bed? I can just tell, yeah. I can tell this story. Um... I, I, I broke a bed. I just, I don't know how else to, I got fucked so hard the bed broke. Like the, like the wooden Baller. panel. What'd you say? Baller. Right. <laughs> oh, actually kind of like sick as hell. Yeah. The, like, it is sick as hell. Yeah. It was wooden and the wood like snapped and the mattress fell in. No way. Has that happened to you too? Yeah. Damn. During sex? Yeah, in college, I lifted hey, a girl. straight pride right here. I lifted a girl <laughs> up in the air. I lifted- Listen, when there's a man involved, you've got an extra 50 pounds easy, Okay. I'm, I, I'm You like, haven't broken a bed? Well, it's just a, it's Aww. such a thrust. Ashley. That's true. I'm really not doing a lot of thrust. Yeah, I mean, he's like, it's, he's throwing the weight of his body into my body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it was humping that did it. I think, I think. <laughs> Holy shit. I, th- I'm, don't remember. I think I was on my back and he, I, you know what? I honestly couldn't tell you the position. I don't wow. remember. But I remember we were having sex and I like, whoop, I, like, I felt myself like drop and I was like, oh yeah, that's because. The wood broke and then it was at my parents' house and I had to be like, hey, the bed's broken. I don't know what happened. And we never like addressed it, but like, oh my God. I had to be like, yeah, sorry. I got like dicked down. Her mom and dad had to be like, okay, so Maddie's getting pounded, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, I'm I'm really proud of her. I didn't want to know, but I guess I'm proud. (laughs) Um, Mom, dad. I'm getting pounded. <laughs> I'm getting pounded so hard I'm breaking your shit. <laughs> it's like it's like that imaginary conversation that like they make tapes about the after school like special <laughs> tapes where you're supposed to like I had my first time like or I'm about to have my first time but then like taken to the logical extreme and it's like um if I were to 
get my back broke. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a first, what's protection for that? Use a condom, uh, but also neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> neck brace. So you think I should get like a steel framed <laughs> okay. Okay. Asking my mom about sex. So, like, how are babies made? And also, how do I stop my gag reflex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did one time. Okay, here's here's me having that dog in me a little bit. One time, I did, I did break something really with my ex girlfriend who I was with for six years. And no, no, are you, are you, <laughs> your hip, is that on, where your hip went you, wrong? <laughs> okay. Are you saying this because you want to join? No, in? no, I genuinely, we, we broke. I know we broke something because we were we were worried about it because it was a sublet. I, and I don't remember this situation. You like chipped some paint or something. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. I think you're thinking of when you messed up the paint by writing a poem on the wall. I think that <laughs> was the damage that your Listener, sex did to the apartment. Listener, write in how to lesbian, because we don't necessarily have, if you're not using oh, a strap. I remember, I remember. It was, you guys were so quiet, they thought you had died. <laughs> <laughs> So your neighbors had to call the police and it was super embarrassing. <laughs> Listen, okay? Gay, lesbian sex, especially good lesbian sex, is not as theatrical as straight sex, okay? I get it. I understand that. But the data is not on your side, okay? The highest level of satisfaction. Oh, satisfaction. Ashley, we are not talking about satisfaction. <laughs> talking We're about talking mass about destruction. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't you don't rate straight sex by satisfaction. You rate it the way you rate like an earthquake, just in terms of like <laughs> degrees of damage, <laughs> emotionally and physically. Yeah, you measure it in a logarithmic scale. <laughs> <laughs> that it's exactly, it's, it syncs up with how much is destroyed, how much stuff you destroy. Sometimes I'll throw a lamp just because, you like get, after you I finish, if I finish too fast, <laughs> coming too quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we, we did break that. So not... There is something hot about it though. Oh, There's something hot sure, about like... seeing it and being like, wow, you fucked me so hard that that happened. Did, did you, fi did you, Orgasm after, before, or was it just? Uh, I think we stopped halfway through and started laughing. If yeah. I remember, because we were That's like, "This fun. is hilarious sense. and insane." He's no, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I'll keep it totally anonymous. But the, it's that's that is the best. Sex when you're like, oh, I love you so much that we can like yes. laugh during this. Oh, that's, like, yes. that's so good. It's the best. That's yeah. so good. Silly Billy sex. By the way, I love yeah. you saying let's keep it anonymous and then just, I love if you had said the name. I'll keep it in totally anonymous, but it was uh, Greg Gutfeld. Um, <laughs> Gutfeld. Gutfeld on Gutfeld. Fox. Gutfeld. I don't know. Yeah, Gutfeld like, on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me so hard, my bed broke. <laughs> If we hadn't lost people because of all the straight representation on the show, we just lost everybody right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if I was like, hey, so sorry, quick update. Haven't kissed a girl. Did fuck gut though. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck comics. I don't fuck comics that bad. I really, I, they've, all, they've all been <laughs> extremely bad. funny people. <laughs> you were going to say something though. Was I going to say something? We, we were about to go off on, I think around the broken bed. You said, oh, I actually, and I think there might've been another broken thing. Oh my gosh. I wish I could remember. I don't know. Um, sorry. I totally don't know what I was going to say. No, it's okay. Um, but yeah, being able to like laugh with somebody during sex is like very fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's really, that's a sign. That's really good sex. I agree. I know that was kind of short for you. Is there anything you no, wanted to add No, I think it was a fun it? story. Any other things that have been broken? Broken? I mean, we snapped the bed in half, but <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like structural damage? <laughs> no, I think I've kept it pretty clean other than that. <laughs> structural <laughs> damage. I think Talking just about the, Katrina. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, in terms of, the, what, do you remember, do you remember, um, Actually, you might have seen this. September 11th, 2001. <laughs> that was, I lost my virginity. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a joke with like two dicks. <laughs> Mr. President, a second dick has hit the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Although that there makes, it is. I switched up the buildings and the dicks. Yeah, whatever. Well, that's good. I think we're done. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> 
Well, I would love to do bonus, so I we should probably wrap it up. Bonus right. on the Patreon, patreon.com slash WHGS. Jamie, what, or, what do you have that people can go see or watch online? I guess you can listen to my podcast. Uh, can I go home can now? Can I go home now? Uh, you've done it several times. Mm-hmm. We had some really funny episodes. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. That's pretty much it, yeah. You can follow me on social media, Jamie Wolf Comedy. And you go on tour sometimes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'll be on tour, hopefully, yeah. soon. So go to... Don't have dates. <laughs> go to his Instagram. Not very useful. Turn on the notifications, the whole thing. Maddie, anything you want to plug? Uh, you can check out my other comedy podcast called And How's That Working For You with Kenyon Adam Chick. And I also have a mailing list for when I go on tour. Um, and I write essays on Substack, which isn't comedy related, but... If you like like the gender talk I do on here, there's a lot of that in there. Mm. And and uh, these guys are the funniest around. So go follow them. Patreon.com slash WHGS to support this pod. We can't do it without the Patreon. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for being here. I'm on tour. I'll text you when I'm in your city. Thanks for listening, everybody. Patreon.com slash WHGS. We have a special going on. If you donate $1, you get all of the content. Because I'm saying thank you to everyone who's been a patron. And uh, if you want to go and explore being a patron, now is the time. Maybe I'll do this as a regular thing. I don't know. You can try it and see, oh, I love these bonus episodes. And then you can sign up for a different tier when the when the month is over. Oh, and uh, AshleyGavin.com. I have, a, I, I have a massive tour, lots of theaters. A lot of them are already sold out and we're adding second shows. So, And some of them are about to sell out. So Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco, Los Angeles, all kinds of stuff. And then special gay thought today with Maddie because I've recorded a lot of things today, so I'm running out of gay thoughts. Arm wrestling yeah. is a good way to hold hands and not be gay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I really panicked because I hadn't thought of one. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> uh, Do you think that's why men arm wrestle, though? Because they just want to hold hands? I think lots and of men about being gay? do lots of things because they just want to feel love and connection and they don't want to tell people that they want that. And that's I think that's the whole thing with smacking each other on the butt on the field, don't you? Yeah. But if you just hold hands, you both win. That, that is, <laughs> it's the straightest way to be like, we're going to hold hands, but somebody has to lose. I was about to make that exact same <laughs> joke. If there's a winner and a loser, it's not gay, it's sports. <laughs> That's what a top so, and a bottom is. Exactly, exactly. It's a winner and a loser. So you can have you can have butt sex without it being gay. It's just, you know. You say touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> touchdown or uh, I don't know. Maybe that's why they get to dance after they score. That's when the femininity and the freedom gets to play. You know what I mean? Yeah, get the gay. Look at that touchdown I just did. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then you're like, well, I'm a bird. <laughs> 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 I've earned one gay moment. <laughs> I've, earned, I've earned one flick of the wrist. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that was a gay thought. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Mm-hmm.